When you've decided to get a min pin, their living arrangements is something that's super important to consider. Now, for some of us out there, I know you don't have you know, a big yard, you don't have the house that you own, um, and you're right now currently in an apartment. So you're asking yourself, is it possible for me to get a min pin? And I wanna tell you now up front, the answer is yes. Now, there are some things you wanna consider, and so in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of those things that you need to think about when it comes to getting a min pin. Hey guys, welcome back to Mid Pin Nation. My name is Nate. If this is your first time with us, thanks for joining us. If you have not done so yet already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, and that way you get all of our future videos and don't forget the notification bell either. Also, while you're down there, make sure you check out the recommended products that I list in the description in each and every video that I put out, um, and make sure you go check that out. Even if you checked it out previously, because I try to keep them updated with the most up-to-date items that I'm either using for my pets or it's been recommended recommended to me by other men pin owners. So the first thing up is how do you get a men pin into your apartment? Now this is not a physical how do you put them through the door and get them in, which for some may be part of a challenge but we are actually talking about what are the rules and regulations to kind of bring them into an apartment. The main thing that you need to consider is, is that unlike a lot of places that you live, some of the most regulated places are going to be apartment complexes that you're gonna move into. So you definitely need to know upfront if pets are even allowed, and if they are allowed, what you need to do to kind of you know, bring them into your apartment. Now for most, that's gonna be you need to go talk to your apartment manager and say, hey, I've decided to get a pet, and they're gonna ask you what type of pet and the weight, you know, how many you intend to get, and then usually the breed is very specific. So I've not really seen any places that men pins are considered what they would call a dangerous breed. Um, so usually that's not a problem, and obviously men pins are you know usually lightweight, even if they you know maybe bigger than some other men pins. They're usually far under the weight restrictions that come with some complexes. But definitely know that up front, and also know that just because you're getting a men pin puppy that weighs this amount, know what their you know average weight you know 10 to 12, 14 pounds is going to be, um, and make sure that it falls under the guidance of the apartment complex. Now, something else to consider with the apartment complex as well is that they are going to require you to pay some fees up front. Usually that's going to be some type of pet deposit, which works just like your deposit that you paid. It's kind of a security deposit that you're going to pay a certain amount. It could be three to $500 usually. And for some, that's going to be something that is just going to pay for damages on the way out when you decide to leave you know, your apartment down the road. Or some like to say that this is not only your deposit for damages, but it's kind of your deposit for cleaning on the way out. And basically you're not going to get any of that money back. So definitely know that up front. So therefore, when it comes time to leave, you're not blindsided when you expect to have, you know, that three to five hundred dollars back in your pocket. Additionally, usually month to month, a lot of places charge what's called a pet rent. So just as you get charged your monthly rent for your uh, staying there, pet rent is also something to consider. You know, usually it's thirty five to fifty dollars and um, it's something that is a continuous every you know every month um, part of your rent package. So make sure that on top of all the normal fees that you pay and you know the rent that you pay that you can afford it when you're looking to budgeting for a min pin. If you're looking for more things about costs for a min pin, then definitely check out my video I did all about um, the costs that you're going to pay when you own a min miniature pincher. So real quick, I want to touch on hey if you decide not to follow any of these rules and regulations and bring your min pin in, there are a few things that can happen. Um, for some, your landlord may be very lenient with you and they may just allow you to add them to the lease uh, and moving forward, pay all the fees. Um, some could go as far as just charging you a fine of some kind on top of paying those fees. Um, but most of the times they do have the right to either evict a pet, which means either you're gonna get rid of the pet or you're going to be moving pretty quickly and then now you're gonna be paying all those fees for breaking your lease or some could go to the extreme nature usually they don't go this far but could go to the fact of actually evicting you from the property and therefore possibly suing you for all you know the remainder that you'd not pay so just make sure that you understand the risk if you're going to try to bring your min pin in without paying the fees but it's probably not going to be worth it and you're going to be able to sleep a lot better at night if you just get it you know, square from day one. Okay, now that you have your men pin inside of the home, you paid all the fees, they are good standing citizens of the apartment complex, what is the next step? Well, the next step you need to know is, is you need to be ready to do some training. So the big training you're gonna be worried about is, is you're gonna be worried about 
potty training and you're going to be worried about kind of, I would say, you know, their voice, you know, their barking, their yapping, their whining and crying. Um, how do you deal with this? So when you are gone during the day, I would highly, highly consider that you look into either some type of doggy daycare more so than even other places um, because if the dog is whining during the day, if they're in a crate or any other situation I've set up for them, there's a lot less of a chance that you're going to even know about it for one. And two, there's more of a chance that people are going to hear it in an apartment complex and cause complaints, which then could, you know, result in problems for you. So definitely make sure that you check that out um, as a possible solution. And then the other one is, is the fact of get some type of, you know, those Furbo dog cameras or the pet cube has one. There's a couple of different ones on the market. Um, whatever one works for you, but it's something that you can kind of look in on your dog and, and kind of know what's going on. And that way you're not blindsided. If you do know there's a problem, you can see it's happening and you can kind of take some action. On top of that, you need to make sure that you are really, really good at providing the most calm environment. And if you can, try to provide them away from the walls that you know that are the most troublesome. You know, you will hear when there's obviously people right above you or below you or on the, each side. Try to identify the room in your apartment, which is sometimes hard, that will have the least amount of activity, the least amount of noise, you know, away from a window that will kind of help them as they learn, you know, to kind of not yap at each and everything that passes by. And when you are home, you have to be very strict at helping them learn and helping them, showing them that when they don't bark, they get rewarded. Um, and if you just continue to let them bark at those things every time someone walks by, then it's going to get very annoying for other people. And like I said, you run the risk of getting complaints and possibly even losing your min pin in your apartment. Okay, so let's talk about potty training now. So potty training in an apartment, while it's pretty much the same as potty training in, in any other household, a couple things to consider. So you either have one or two options. You have the standard option of taking them outside, but unlike obviously other um, households that they have their door right there, unless you happen to have that type of apartment set up, you're gonna be taking them down. You're gonna be taking them on a leash and taking them outside. The other option is some people like to use puppy pads. Now I tend to still lean towards taking them outside and going that route because I think long term that's going to help them and it's going to make you happier, especially if you move on to other places and you want them to go outside and maybe your backyard. Um, having that option definitely makes it a lot better. Um, but at the same time, I never lived in an apartment that was 10, 20 stories in the air. So I could I could understand uh, if someone wanting to use a puppy pad more often, especially maybe at nighttime um, when they don't want to take them all the way down, especially if it's maybe in a place that you don't feel comfortable taking them out when it's dark outside. Either way, make sure you have both on hand and be ready. And I would almost lean towards to kind of experimenting with both and knowing that, hey, I'm going to see which one works for me because it could be different. And then beyond that, it's just the same consistency. It's the same knowing that, and just know that up front, you know, you're in an apartment and you're gonna go one of these two methods and it's gonna take time. And therefore it's gonna take a lot longer to say, hey, a trip outside is not gonna be a quick go out in your backyard. It's gonna be a, you know, put the coat on, you know, make sure you go all the way downstairs, take them to the proper area, make sure you have all the proper bags that you need to scoop up after them and all those things. And so it will take more time, it will take more effort, but, like I said, I think in the long run, if you're going that route, it will be more rewarding. Okay guys, so these are all very important things that you need to consider when getting a min pin for your apartment. Also something to consider is crate training. And so crate training is a very valuable um, piece of training that you can use, especially for a min pin in an apartment. And so I did a video all about crate training your dog um, and kind of the pitfalls that I ran into with that. So definitely click on the video, tap on the screen right now, right over here, and I'll bring you to that video. And thank you once again. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. And we'll see you over in that video.